Hello and welcome to Massey Ranch Elementary in Pearland. I have a quick story to tell you. I've actually been at this school before. It probably was 8 to maybe 12 years ago, but I've been here and these kids weren't even born the last time I was here. Can you guys say hello to everybody watching KPRC2? So I'm with 125 of the best second graders in Houston, right? Or in Pearland, right? Yes. And what I'm going to do is uh, let's talk about the weather. We're going to have some demonstrations. But I want to start with uh, reading my children's book on the water cycle to you. Are you guys okay with that? Yes. Okay, here we go. So it's called A Wild Ride on the Water Cycle, a Jake and Alice adventure. And so it's uh, written by me, Jake and Alice. Jake is my oldest son. Alice is my grandmother's name because I, at the time I wrote this, I had two daughters, uh, Amber and Abby, and I couldn't pick one or the other. So Alice is my grandmother. So Jake and Alice hang out together just like you do with your friends. They laugh and play and sometimes even cry together. But they're very different from your friends. They are drops of water. Jake and Alice met a lake so long ago there were still dinosaurs in the water and on the land. Jake, who's shy and quiet, saw these strange creatures all around. When he noticed Alice, who was brave and adventurous, splashing near the shore, he swam over to her. He didn't feel so alone anymore. Nice to meet you, said Alice. Don't fret. They look tough, but they won't hurt you. Jake didn't know if he believed her, but he splashed around with her anyway. Before long, he had forgotten his fear, and he made a new friend. A Tyrannosaurus Rex was drinking at the edge of the lake. Oh, let's get closer so we can see its big teeth, said Alice. Jake just quivered. She grabbed his hand. Don't worry, Jake. I'll protect you. They drifted closer, and the dinosaur swallowed the two friends whole. Whoa, what's happening? They shouted as they slipped and slid down the dinosaur's long throat. When they finally landed in his stomach, it was pitch black. Well, I guess that wasn't such a good idea, said Alice. They stayed close to each other in the dark, so it wasn't so scary. But with no sunlight, their days began to run together. They sloshed around telling jokes and stories until one day, their whole world shook. The mighty dinosaur fell to the ground and died. Now when any living thing dies, the earth absorbs the water inside the body. Jake and Alice were pulled from the blackness of the dinosaur into the warm brown of the earth. Plant and tree roots surrounded them like a spider's web. Jake got scared again. Don't worry, Jake, said Alice. I'm here. I will not leave you. Now Jake remembered how she had gotten them swallowed by the T-Rex, but he knew she was a good friend, so he didn't say a thing. Like all living things, plants and trees need water to survive. Water drops carry vital nutrients to vegetation. Alice held Jake's hand as the tree root drew them in for nourishment. From the root, they traveled up a tall trunk, out into a limb, into the veins of a leaf. Everything looked bright and green, and the two friends swayed gently in the breeze. They relaxed, feeling the warmth of the sun. As the temperature warmed, Jake and Alice began to feel funny. Suddenly, they felt themselves floating. Alice, where are you? Jake called, I can't see you. I'm right here, Jake, but where are you? The friends had transformed from liquid water into invisible water vapor. They were in danger of losing each other now. Now, they were both scared. Alice grasped around in the air until she found Jake's hand. I've got you. She grabbed him just in time. What started out as a slow ascent quickly turned into a race upward. They felt like they were in a rocket launching into space. They were caught in an updraft, a part of a storm that brings moisture from the ground to the very tops of the clouds. As they climbed higher and higher, the temperature got colder. Jake and Alice began to shiver and then to freeze. Their bodies started collecting ice. The ice built up until they were in a center of a baseball-sized piece of hail. Once they reached the top of the cloud, they shot back to the earth at 100 miles an hour. It was a wild ride. On the ground, Jake and Alice melted quickly. The sun shone on them, evaporating them for a second time. Oh no, here we go again, Alice said. But this time, they didn't rise nearly as fast or travel as far. They turned from invisible water vapor into drops of rain and fell, fell, landing with a splash into a river. Now Jake was getting used to this adventure. This is fun, Alice, he called as they raced down the rushing river. 
When they slowed down, they found themselves in a huge ocean. This body of water would be their home for a very long time. For many years, Jake and Alice explored the seas. They swam through all the oceans of the world. They played with dolphins and whales in the Pacific, saw colorful coral reefs near Australia, and even hung out with penguins in the Antarctic. The journey took 2,000 years. It didn't seem very long to Jake and Alice. They were best friends now. They splashed happily around the world, talking endlessly about the fascinating sights along the way. One especially hot summer day in the Atlantic Ocean, Alice noticed thunderstorms a short distance away. Now she was experienced enough to know that soon she and Jake would become water vapor again and start their journey to the sky. She was not worried. This time was different. As Jake and Alice rocketed up, they condensed into a raging swirl of clouds. It was loud, windy, and scary. Stay together, Alice shouted. What? Jake called, spinning away from her. Alice caught Jake's hand just as the clouds started to circle the eye of the storm. As the storm moved into the Gulf of Mexico, Jake and Alice's speed picked up. They held on for dear life as the winds around the center of the hurricane twisted at 125 miles an hour. Jake thought his life was over. Finally, the hurricane made landfall in Galveston Island in Texas. Jake and Alice turned from spinning clouds into huge raindrops. Friction and gravity flattened raindrops, so they fell to the ground shaped like hamburgers. This wasn't a gentle rain shower. It was a torrential downpour. Jake and Alice were part of a powerful flood that damaged homes and cars and uprooted trees. Oh no, said Alice. Did we do this? After many hours, the flood waters receded. Jake and Alice seeped back to the earth, but this time they passed all the roots. They sank deeper and deeper into the earth until they reached a pool of fresh water. They landed in what's called an aquifer, the place where we get drinking water. What's next? Thought the friends. They waited and waited for their next adventure. But absolutely nothing happened. Water can be in the ground 10,000 years and go as deep as 1,000 feet, sometimes more. Jake and Alice did a lot of swimming and talking. If they weren't best friends who had been on many adventures together, they would have gotten really bored with each other. It seemed to take an eternity, but Jake and Alice finally climbed to the surface of the earth. Underground pipes pulled them into a kitchen refrigerator freezer. Where are we? It's cold in here, Jake whispered as his teeth chattered. They turned from water into a frozen cube of ice. It was the coldest they had ever been. Even hogs couldn't warm them up. Too cold to even talk, they stayed in the dark freezer for a few days. Finally, the freezer door opened and the light went on. A boy named Tom reached in and scooped them up. He put them in a glass of water. Jake and Alice began to melt. The boy put the cup to his mouth. Not again, said Jake. Alice laughed. I wonder if he knows he's drinking the same water that dinosaur drank. Jake laughed too. Down the hatch they went. It was just as dark as it had been inside the T-Rex. Tom finished his water and went outside to play soccer. It was a hot, sunny day. As his body temperature rose, he started to perspire. Guess who came out of the pores of Tom's forehead to cool him off? That's right, Jake and Alice became beads of sweat. They soon evaporated off Tom's skin. They rose gently into the sky and became a small part of a beautiful, puffy, cumulus cloud. The clouds provided shade to Tom and his friends who played beneath them. Jake and Alice floated gently above the United States' as clouds. On nice days, they transformed into cirrus clouds, soaring 30,000 feet above the earth. In San Antonio, Texas, they hugged the ground as fog, which is a stratus cloud that forms on the Earth's surface. They saw stunning mountain peaks, and the view of the ocean from up in the sky was breathtaking. As summer turned to fall and fall to winter, the beautiful colors below them faded and the temperature got cold again. Jake and Alice started falling from the cloud. As Jake looked at his friend, he realized she had never looked so beautiful. They had become snowflakes gliding gently to the ground. They landed on a frozen lake in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Ice skaters enjoyed the winter, laughing and swirling around the ice. Jake and Alice loved watching the skaters. The friends had become part of the ice, so they had a really good view. 
Three months later, as winter turned to spring, the friends melted into the lake. Looking around, Jake realized they had returned to the very same spot where they had met all those years ago. There were even creatures drinking off the shore, but none were as big as the dinosaurs. Alice clutched Jake's hands. Let's stay in the middle for a while, she said. It's much safer here. Jake laughed and splashed her. Aren't you ready to take another wild ride? Don't worry, Alice. I'll protect you. The end. Did you guys like that? Yeah! So this is the water cycle, this image that you're seeing here. You've got clouds, you've got rain, you have snow, you have groundwater flow, you have everything. It's there, and that's what you're going to learn about in second grade about the water cycle. And so you have the different terms. So I'm not going to talk so much about that. What I want to talk about today is what makes our weather, because we have storms coming on Saturday, and I want to talk about how those are formed. So here's precipitation. Here are two drops of rain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Jake and Alice in my hand. Ready? One, two. Okay, we got two drops of rain right here. Now I'm going to go like this. By going like this, where'd the water go? I didn't kill the water. I didn't even make the water disappear. All the water did by the heat of my hands was evaporate. So the water, the two drops are still here, but they've changed phase. They went from liquid into water vapor or gas. So that's what happened. Water, gas. And so there they're swirling around somewhere around here. So this is what evaporation looks like. You're outside, those, whatever's on the ground, the moisture that you don't see as it lifts, it condenses and it becomes clouds. And if it keeps condensing and the cloud gets big enough and gets heavy enough, you're going to get the rain fall back down again. And so there's your cycle. So what we want to talk about now is condensation. It's changed from gas to liquid. Do you see this picture of this t uh, pillow here? Do you see the steam coming off that? That's evaporation. That's seeing evaporation in motion. Usually you don't see it because what I did was invisible. Now you can see the evaporation. So what happens is the sun heats the earth, air heats up and rises, clouds condense, and rain and storms form. So I need two people to help me now. So let's see. Come on. Yeah, you two. Okay. What's your name? Vita. Vita, turn around. And then what's your name? Xavier. Xavier. Everyone say hi to Vita and Xavier. Hi. And turn around. Hi. So here's what I, I, I need you guys to use your muscles, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple drops of rain here. So there's Jake, Alice, there's Vita, and Xavier. Okay? we got to put four drops of rain. So we're all here. Well, you know what? Let me put me in here, too. Can I be in here, too? Yes. Okay, so I'm here. You didn't put in me in there. I didn't. Okay, we're going to put Xavier. Xavier thinks he didn't go in. Okay, so there's Xavier. All right, ready? That's what I think. I think there's two of Xavier's in here. What I need you to do is I need you to pump this up. Before you do that, can you guys read what the temperature is in there? Do you see what it is? Tell me if you can see what it is. Can you see? It, it should, should be, be what's lit, lit up. up. It's kind of tough to see. It's not a very good thermometer. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. What's the one that's lit up? Mm. It's hard to see, eh? 10. Uh, it's fine. Okay. Here, I, I need your muscles. Okay, pump it up. Ready? Just pump that. Go ahead, use your muscles. Oh, you got your muscles? Good job. Oh, yeah, you got it. Good job. So what we're doing right now is we're heating up the bottle. Okay, you got it? You good? Okay, let's go ahead. Now use your muscles. Keep it going. So we've got five drops of water. Well, six if you count Xavier, who's two drops, right? Keep going. You got it? I don't it? know if I had two drops. You don't know. I think you did. We both think you did, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have heated up the bottle. Oh, yeah, because see, it's really hard to like, you guys did a great job. So what happens when we have five drops of water in here? And we made it warmer, six drops of water. What happens? We created a cloud, and that cloud lifted. So you guys understand what's happening? The sun heats the earth, air heats up and rises, clouds condense. And so what are we all now in two drops of rain for Xavier? We are all now a cloud. We are no longer drops of water. Does everyone see that and understand that? Good job, good job, guys. You did great. So how do we get rain? Let's answer that question. We made clouds, we got water, we've got clouds. 
How do we get rain? Well, here's what's important. And this is what you need to know about Saturday. Right now, we have high pressure right over us in Pearland. Air pressure is the weight of a column of air above the surface. So air has weight. We don't feel it because does it feel like anything is on your head? No. You're walking around. There is no weight whatsoever. But high pressure is actually air that's heavy that weighs down on you, but you don't feel it. But if you're water and you're a cloud and you're getting weighed down, you know what you can't do is you can't build up. Now, low pressure is light. So low pressure lifts. So, air pressure is the weight of a column of air above the surface. Wind, by the way, travels from high pressure to low pressure. That's why we get wind. So you need high and low pressure. That's the wind direction. Okay, so high pressure is heavy for clouds. Low pressure is light. So to demonstrate this, I need two more people to help me. All right, let's go in the middle this time. Let's um, root off right here. Let's, uh, right here. And then, yeah, you. So we have a girl and a boy. So here is... What's your name? Amelia. Amelia? No, Amelia. Amelia. Okay, I'm a, everyone say hi to Amelia. Hi. Come over here. Hi. Say your name again. Amelia. Okay, what's your name? My name is Reed. Reed. Okay, Reed. Face everybody. Here's what we're going to do. They're going to help me demonstrate something. We're going to talk about high and low pressure. So here, we're on the ground. High pressure sinks the air. All right, I want you, Amelia, to lift this straight up. Lift it straight. Why come you can't lift it? I don't because it's stuck to the to the table. It's heavy. So remember, so high pressure, the pressure under this is so low that the high pressure will not let Amelia lift. Okay, you try. Let's see. Just to go straight up. Do you see? It's trying. It's trying. That's how high pressure works. So when high pressure is in control, like today, are we going to get any rain? No. No. But when low pressure is around. Well, that's high pressure. When low pressure is around, it lifts. And this isn't even around. Does everyone get that? Here's high pressure, sinks the air. It's heavy. Look. Oh, my gosh. That's how high pressure works. Low pressure lifts. Good job, guys. Good job. Maybe. Okay. Here's how I forecast the weather. Thank you. Have a seat. I look at radar. I look at satellite data, snow and rain and clouds. I look at radar, that, that hook you're seeing there, that's a radar indicated tornado, that's bad. And then we have recording stations. We have a recording station here that shows what the temperature is at Massey Ranch. And these guys are gonna tell you what the temperature is and what the wind speeds are at Massey Ranch. I have surface maps, so I went to school to understand how to interpret weather models. And then I also look outside. If the rock is wet, it's raining. If the rock is swaying, it's windy. If the rock is hot, it's sunny. If the rock is cool, it's overcast. If the rock is white, it's snowing. If the rock is blue, it's cold. If the rock is gone, tornado! So I have to look with the science, but also I need to look outside too. And then I make the graphics. And then I go on TV. Notice how I'm flipped. So if I brush my teeth on at home, the toothbrush is right here. If I brush my teeth on TV, the toothbrush is over here. You're going to see your friends. The hardest thing they're going to have to do is to know where to stand because they're flipped backwards. That's going to be the hardest challenge for them. Oh. Now it's your guys' turn. Come on up. You're going to do the weather for your city. You're going to give the current temperatures. You're going to tell what the weather is today, what happens tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. And then you're going to um, say goodbye. Ready? Let's have Aiden go first. Mm, okay. Okay? We're, remember, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to set you up. And while you're getting set up, I'm going to switch so everybody can watch you. When you can see yourself, you can go ahead and start. Remember to introduce yourself and go. There it is. Oh, are you on the right? You're not on the right graphic. Let me get the right graphic for you. So it's getting set up. There you are. Okay, you ready? Okay. Step back. Okay, go ahead. Remember the mic. Put the mic to your mouth and start. Okay, Aiden. Remember, You're on. Remember, stand to the side. Yep. Hello, my name is Aiden. And weed, weed, weed. I was second grader at Massey Ranch. You trust the, the middle button, yep, the middle button. 
I can't see nothing. It's hard, huh? Okay, remember what happens on Saturday. On Saturday, it's going to rain. Good job. Put the, keep the mic there. Okay, good. And, on, and in Houston, it's going to be rainy and chilly. Good job. Goodbye. Yay! Good job. Everybody give it a good round of applause. Good job. Okay, Axel. Axel Not Foley is next. You ready? Yep. Okay, you're ready, Axel, right? Okay, well, let's make sure you're on the right graphic. And then you introduce yourself and you're ready to go. And your dad, remember, your dad's watching. So start, how about start by saying hi to your dad? Hello, Nick. My, my name is Axel. I, my name is Axel. My last name is Beaky. I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a second grader at Massey Ranch Elementary. At, at, at Massey Ranch, it is 55 degrees. On Saturday it will it will rain. In Houston it will be cold, chilly and windy. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Good job. Good job. Are you ready? Okay, remember there is a graphic after that if you want to get to the other graphic, all right? Okay, Michaela, are you ready? Let me make sure you're on the right graphic. Let's make sure we're in the right place. Yes, you're all set, Michaela. Go ahead. My name is Michaela. I'm a second grader in Matthew Ranch Elementary right now in Pearland. It is 55 degrees. On, on Saturday, it will it will rain. On Sunday, it will be chilly and windy. Thank you for watching this progress. Yay! Good job. Hey, you guys, come on up. Come on up. Everybody, come on up. How did, how did they do? What did you guys think? How did they do? Michaela, come on up. They did great. How did they look? Come on, Michaela. Axel, Aiden, come on up. We want, to, we want to give these guys a big round of applause because that took a lot of bravery. They did excellent. Good job, guys. How did it feel doing it? How did you like it? It was good. What did you think, Aiden? I think it was good. It was good? Okay. That was fun. It was fun? <laughs> cool. Hey, I think your teachers have something set up for, some, for a special goodbye. Is that right? Okay, come on up. We got our teachers doing something special here. Mr. Yanez, we just wanted oh, to... Oh, wait, hold, wait, let me get the mic for you. Okay, oh, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Yanez, my name is Ms. Udine. On behalf of my team and uh, my principal, Ms. Grote, we wanted to thank you for your time and expertise, um, sharing it with our second graders, and we have a little something. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Round of applause. Can grade. I open this? Or is it bad luck? Bad luck. All right, all right, all right. How about can I open this? Yes! Uh, yes? Okay, let's see. Um, can I guess? Ooh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Ready for this? Look what I am. An honorary Massey Maverick. Maverick. <laughs> and if I'm thirsty, what happens? I am a Massey Ranch Hot. cup. <laughs> Look what this there. Lanyard. Lanyard. Ooh, lanyard. So I can walk around like I'm a teacher, right? Or no? No. No, no you guys say no. They would not. No, they don't. I can't come back, just so you guys know. And I got a card. There it is. Yay. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for having me today. You thank guys you so did great. One more round of applause, round of applause. for our budding meteorologist. Yay. Okay, we have three minutes left. So let's do some question and answers. Okay, yes, question. Come on up, come on up. You gotta come up so we can hear you. I lost the mic. 
Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. You guys can sit down. My mom asked me if I could take a picture with you. Yes. Okay, so stay right here and because we're done in three minutes. Okay, next question. Yes, come on up. You good? Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah. Uh, what's your question, Hannah? Uh, my question is, how does a tsunami start? Ooh, tsunami. Great question. So here's how tsunamis start. First of all, we cannot get a tsunami in the Gulf of Mexico because all the Gulf of Mexico is is a big hole. But if you're on the west coast from Washington, Oregon to California, and there's an earthquake all the way across the ocean near Japan, what happens is that shaking lifts up the ocean floor. And so if you're in a boat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you will not feel a thing because it's just going like this. But as the shoreline in California, for example, goes like this, the water starts to rise and that water will go up a mile. So if your house is anywhere from a mile to the coast, your house will be underwater, similar to what happens with us with hurricanes, but it's much more violent because it's just a big lifting of the water level. So it starts with an earthquake, it travels, and you can have an earthquake in uh, um, Alaska too, and then it moves through. So that's, that's how a tsunami forms. Does it answer your question? Kind of? Well, okay, so tell me what's not clear. Tell me what's not clear, we'll try. What's, what's not clear? Uh, there's not really nothing clear. Okay. But I would say you did a really good job answering. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, we have less than a minute, so I don't think I have enough time for a question. We'll leave you here for your picture. So what we're going to do, when Renee gives me a countdown, we're going to say goodbye to Michael and our audience. Are you guys ready to do that? Yeah. Okay, you're ready. Okay, real quick. Until I get that countdown, what's the question? Yes. Yes, you get a picture too. Okay, that's a. What does this mean? What does this mean? Yes. Picture. Yes. Renee, what does this mean? Thirty seconds. So we have time for a quick question and an answer. Yes. Can I have a picture? Yes, you get a picture too. These aren't really questions, though, guys, because I'll, I'll, I'll say yes to that. Anyone have a weather question that doesn't involve pictures? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a hurricane. Okay, so we don't have time for that in 30 seconds. But I do have graphics to show you how a hurricane starts. But I'll show that. Okay, ready? Everyone say goodbye. Yay, say goodbye. Bye.